An explosion on a freeway in Los Angeles, effectively shutting down a port for multiple days. Traffic is backed up for miles. This happened two days after a major fire in the Port of Montreal in Canada. And both of these incidents, of course, lithium ion batteries to blame. On Thursday afternoon, a semi-truck hauling a battery energy storage system flipped over in San Pedro. That's a neighborhood in Los Angeles, California. It happened on the Vincent Thomas Bridge. Luckily, the driver was uninjured. However, the damage caused the lithium ion batteries inside to go into thermal runaway. This is extremely dangerous for responding fire crews because there's always that risk that the container itself, the energy storage system, could explode. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. Unfortunately, this incident couldn't have happened in a worse area. The resulting fire blocked a major freeway and has closed several port terminals. As you can see, truck traffic is backed up for miles, and that's going to have a significant effect on the economy. Honestly, the fact that this thing exploded when nobody was around is the best case scenario for firefighters. It makes the scene significantly safer, but firefighters are still faced with a big problem. On one hand, they can let this thing burn itself out, which will likely lead to the freeway being closed for about 48 hours. Just a note, at the time I'm filming this, we're looking at about 24 hours of this thing being on fire. On the other hand, because of the explosion, the doors have been blast wide open. The container's open. The fire crews could flood this whole container with water, likely getting the fire out very quickly. The first issue, it would take a large quantity of water, and that water would get contaminated, dropping directly into the ocean. And even if it's not getting contaminated from the energy storage system itself, from the fire that they're trying to put out, a large quantity of chlorinated water dropping into the ocean, that's not really a good thing either. And if they do stop the cascading thermal runaway effect, there would still be stranded energy inside of the battery cells, inside of the energy storage system. That's the energy left inside of the cells themselves after the fire event. And that poses a large risk of reignition, even after that main fire's out. That lingering danger really complicates firefighting efforts, but it also complicates the efforts of the second responders themselves when we go to start cleaning up this mess. From the firefighter's perspective, the priority is always safety, both their own and that of the public. But incidents like these introduce new variables that can make decision-making incredibly difficult. Now, we don't know why the truck itself flipped over, but what I can tell you is why the battery energy storage system went into thermal runaway, why there was this fire, why there was this large deflagration event. These systems, they're designed to be stationary. They aren't designed to handle high impacts or G-loads. When this unit flipped over, the impact likely knocked things inside of that unit loose. It damaged things like the battery cells, the battery module. Any damage to the battery cells can cause thermal runaway. And if a bus bar is knocked loose, it can lead to things like a large arc flash or something shorting out inside of the box. This is quite the turn of events because just days before this incident, 2,500 miles away, there was a fire in the port of Montreal involving lithium ion batteries, right around 30,000 pounds of lithium ion batteries inside of shipping container. Like I mentioned before, this is an extremely dangerous situation, but it's not just the fire and the deflagration hazard that you have to worry about. In this case, you can see all these batteries off gassing, that whitish gray plume of smoke going across into where residents live in Montreal. This fire started at 2.45 Monday afternoon, and it went on till about 2 a.m. before they had it under control. They didn't actually start evacuating residents till later that evening, and most likely that was due to just the staffing they had available. But it's kind of interesting, when you look at the way they're evacuating these residents, they're going door to door, full turnout gear, which is expected, but full SCBA, could you imagine firefighters showing up to your door, fully masked up, breathing air, and then telling you to evacuate? I would think that would drive a little fear into those residents, thinking maybe they shouldn't be breathing the air that they're currently breathing. Maybe it's time to get out of there. They ended up evacuating right around 50 to 100 homes, and utility crews shut off power to the general area. There might be some people out there that think this is overkill, but you have to look at the level of smoke that was in the atmosphere sticking close to the ground in that area. Now, I'm not 100% sure if these were just lithium ion batteries inside of a shipping container or this was some type of energy storage system that was being shipped. Some of the things I'm seeing from the footage from the scene do point to energy storage, but I can't confirm it at this time. 
These types of incidents are really a lose-lose situation for fire departments. Lots of time on scene, lots of resources. They're just really a pain in the butt. They offer a reminder of the evolving challenges first responders face as we continue to integrate these technologies into our infrastructure.